Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. That is tomorrow. And really the moment we utter the word mother, the what the effect comes in my mind in our mind? A soothing effect. A love, compassion, forgiveness. All those things come in the mind of a child or everyone. The moment I say mother, I am a sannyasin, I left my heart, father, mother, but still the moment every year, this mother's day, when it comes in my mind, I remember the incident that happened. I was very sick, I was young, I was very sick. And uh, I was bedridden. Something happened, and in those days the medical was also not that good. Only I could feel after the puja, my mother used to come and sit by the bedside, and her cool, very comfortable hand she used to keep on my forehead. And every time I could feel, I am going to be all right. And I whole day I used to wait for that particular moment. So Mother Day is a great thing for us. And we the Indians, for us, everything Mother. Thank you. And truly you have to be mothers. Those who are mothers, you have to be truly mothers. Mother is the bhava. Is not just giving the birth of a child, it is the philosophy, it is the bhava, it is the lifestyle, it is the behavior, it is the total transformation. And mother is she who is completely sacrificing her whole self for a good son for the society. <laughs> so that is mother. She only he could appreciate me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, let us start. And we are going to study the Bhagavatam. It's the book of love. And this book of love, this Bhagavatam, is based on the life of Sri Krishna. The moment we say the book of love, it is mother again. But Sri Krishna in the form of a male, and Sri Krishna, he did so many the heroic things, but finally it is the Sri Krishna who is giving the whole protection. Last time, in the last Sunday, we discussed about the Sri Krishna revealed by Kunti. Kunti was his auntie, but at the same time, Kunti had that eyesight to see. You know, the contemporary people cannot judge that way. They always see, oh, this man is like this, this man like that. Afterwards only, people can understand. But the contemporary, that Kunti could understand Krishna as Supreme God. And today, another great personality, who had a fight with Krishna, the Bhishma is going to reveal about this Lord, the Krishna. So as we usually do, let us chant from here. It's the Vishnu. And the Vishnu is Krishna. The Vishnu, about him, it says, Shantakaram. Bhujaga Shayanam Padmanabham Suresham Vishwadharam Gagana Sadrisham Meghabarnam Shubhangam Lakshmi Kantam 
कमलनयन योगी भी ध्यान गम्यम बंदे विष्णु भव भय हरम सर्वलोक नाथम द मास्टर ऑफ द होल यूनिवर्स दिस इज द विष्णु एंड हाउ ही कैन बी द मास्टर बिकॉज ही इज ऑल पर वेडिंग हाउ ए पर्सन कैन बी ऑल पर वेडिंग बिकॉज ही इज बीभू बीभू मीन्स द कॉन्शियसनेस all pervading as a consciousness this consciousness is everywhere and sometimes it is manifested sometimes not that way manifested but it is there consciousness is always there this is the vishnu and that vishnu that god has created this universe and this universe again should continue in a proper way the manifestation should come in such a way that they should go back to the source to the vishnu again how it is possible so the god himself the vishnu himself comes and takes different type of form and this time he came as sri krishna and he is teaching us the supreme god who had bented as sri krishna intended to continue as human being and he to kunti the blessed mother of the great pandavas realizing the true nature of krishna he prayed to krishna and everyone heard about that god blessed her how that is a unique way because krishna wanted to continue the play so he never wanted to disclose this thing then and there itself and see if a lady realizing the truth telling that to people people would accept so that's why krishna there recognized and with a smile he blessed kunti but totally mesmerized other people they thought out of emotion only the elderly lady is talking like that but he is only krishna we know him very well so they could not even after hearing could not see anything divine in krishna the kunti was telling the last time we were discussing krishna understanding and he is the inner soul of every being he knows the mind of people that's why bhagwan sri ramakrishna said if you are doing apparently very good job and telling very wonderful philosophy but god sees your mind what is going on over there that he looks you cannot you can deceive each and every one but not god so krishna immediately understood that the people who are not thinking in that way as kunti was thinking he blessed the kunti but at the same time we will learn other people to continue and this krishna yudhishthira came and with a great love he prayed to krishna to stay back for some more days and in the first kando of eighth chapter 44 verse it says like this premna राज्ञा रिबा निवारित निवारण निवारण में स्टॉप निवारित स्टॉपिंग होम कृष्ण हाउ प्रेम ना विद एफेक्शनेटली प्लीज कृष्ण यू डोंट गो नॉट लाइक दैट विद ग्रेट एफेक्शन कृष्ण प्लीज डोंट लीव मी सो द वे यू हैव टू टॉक टू गॉड सो यू हैव टू कन्वे योर माइंड इन सच ए वे so he was telling the yudhishthira he was the king but why not that he understood krishna when his mother was telling that he was present 
the personality like Yudhishthira was present over there, he also heard those things. And Yudhishthira is a very high moral person, we all know. But at the same time, Yudhishthira could not understand who Krishna truly is. So here, because Yudhishthira became too overwhelmed with grief for the loss of the most of his kinsmen, and we know that Ugra Sabha, the son of the Roma Harshana, the narrator of the Bhagavatam, and this Ugra Sabha was describing the condition of the king Yudhishthira, who was lamenting. In the 47th sloka, he says, Aho me pushyata agyanam. Aho, high, like that. Not English high. This is. <laughs> And aho means, oh, what will happen to me? So that the aho me pashyata agyanam. I could not see. Look at me. I, Yudhishthira, I consider myself as a knowledgeable person, jnani. No, I could not see. What? Ridhi rudham duratmanaha. Because I could not see, because inside me is a very cruel person is living. Bharakasya dehasya bhaiho. This body, which is supposed to be the food of the dogs and jackals, for that body I have killed Akshohini Hataha. Me Akshohini Hataha. I have killed so many Akshohini. Now I will that uh, our Mm, Sridhar Swami, he has given an explanation about the Akshohini. I will come, alas, what a fool I am. Yudhishthira is telling. And from 48 to 52 slokas, in the first chapter 8, uh, the uh, first kanda, uh, first book, 8th eight, eight chapter, from 48 to 52, he is describing how bitterly the Yudhishthira was feeling. Now, friends, we have to understand. When you do some work, we do some good work, then afterwards we lament. Why? Because we are not very much sure why I am doing it. So that is the problem. So when you are taking up some work and then doing it, you must be completely free. I have accepted the job of a soldier. My dharma is to just carry on the order. If someone is giving me the order, go and kill, I go and kill. The, I cannot do anything. I cannot stop it. All blame is his. Papa is his. I am just like a machine. So in the we will come to those characters. I don't know whether we will be able to because the stories, great stories are there. One person was a great king and he was a great donor. Just to test him how he is that way is a great donor. And one God came in the form of a Rishi and took out everything from him just for his livelihood. He was doing a very menial job like burning the dead bodies. And the owner of that funeral in that area, he said, you have to take one honor for, from everyone, every dead body. And one day his wife, the queen, brought the dead son. Can you remember the name? Raja Harishchandra. This Raja Harishchandra, as because he promised to his employer that I am going to take that honor from every dead body when his wife came and she was not even have, having that much money. And she was carrying the dead body of their son. Even then Harishchandra told, I am sorry. Harishchandra was crying. Harishchandra was turning his face, but at the same time, he stood over there to perform his duty. That is the thing. But the man like Yudhishthira, after having everything, he was lamenting. 
He could stop and he could say all these things before the war. So that we have to be very careful. Sometimes some people are telling wonderful words, but that doesn't mean that that is the religion. We have to see what the character that person is having, what responsibility that person is having, and what action he has taken out of that. Raja Dharma, again and again, particularly in our Indian the, uh, the political scenario, they always talk about the Raja Dharma. So what is that Raja Dharma? Yudhishthira failed to do that and he is lamenting. Alas, what a fool I am! And where he is lamenting? Before Krishna. Indirectly he is blaming Krishna too. <laughs> he is blaming Krishna too. Alas, what a fool I am! What an evil mind do I have! I did not think before that I would be killing the 18 Akshavinis. And why I killed so many people? Parak, parakya sya dehasya. Parakya. Parakya means this body which is supposed to be the food of, after death, the food of the jackals and the dogs. Shamed me, shame on me. Sridharshami giving an account. What is this Akshauhini? See, in our country, in every time, the Mahabharata war, we think it is all imagination, not like that. So, Akshauhini means 21,870 chariots and the soldiers fighting on chariots. That is one. Again, 21,870 soldiers were fighting on elephant. And 65,610 is the cavalry soldiers fighting on the horseback. And 109,350 foot soldiers. And total, 218,700 total soldiers is one Akshavini into 18. So can you imagine 3,936,600 three, soldiers were killed by Yudhishthira. So they were killed by Yudhishthira 18, not all alone, total destruction. The Arjuna and others they also kill. The Yudhishthira, a Kshatriya whose duty was, Swadharma was to fight for the right cause, Dharma Yudha. He exactly did what? But in his subconscious mind he was feeling guilty. Yudhishthira felt guilty. Why? Because in the subconscious mind, he was not very much clear. So whatever the action that we should do, we should be very clear. Otherwise, we are going to suffer. This is the thing. Then, day before yesterday, I think they, they were taking my interview. They just from the, this Chicago University. Of course, they appointed, the, the appointment was before and then one hour that interview, questionnaire. He was asking and also written, yes, no, like that you have to go on. One hour, so a hundred questions. And there, one point was there, do you sometimes feel that you were disgusted with the pastoral job that you were doing now? <laughs> and there was yes, and there was some time, there was like that, and la fourth one was neighbor. Without hesitation, I went over there and told neighbor. And when I said that also neighbor, he was listening from over there. He was, I think, laughing over there. I could hear the sound of laugh. So that people sometimes, the questionnaire they have prepared for the religious leaders in America. They're going to send it out and getting the information, what type of thing they do, etc., etc. The government says sometimes they do. I have taken this, the, this life and I'm satisfied. 
whether i suffer whether i get the praising whether i am successful whether i am failure i am going to stick to this so that first you should take the discrimination then the decision that is the way one should go yudhishthira was not that's why have you noticed in bhagavad gita when the krishna is telling among the pandavas i am arjuna he didn't mention arjuna was not that you you cannot say that he was a religious man he was of course a good person he had the control over his senses but comparing with the yudhishthira we cannot say he was a religious man but krishna said i am arjuna yudhishthira was in a different way he was thinking yudhishthira was lamenting so he did the dharma yudha that was necessary but the yudhishthira is telling the suta is explaining to the rishis aha raja dharma suta chintayan suhidam badam prakritena atmana vipraah sneha moha basham gata sneha moha this raja king the yudhishthira what he is thinking completely deluded moha delusion is moha and affection is the sneha sneha moha in the affection why affection my own people i have killed them that is the affection and that is the moha so this way the towards his kinsmen he was constantly thinking personality like vyasa and also sri krishna himself tried their best to explain and console him but yudhishthira paid no heed to their words here we should remember krishna the god himself he was also involved in that war and from the beginning itself he was there but the krishna is telling no we have done our job that's all why you are thinking in this way but some people they will go on thinking brooding and slowly slowly they become unhappy make other people also unhappy so i remember one lady she was not having the baby and constantly she was creating lot of problem going to this person that person prayer doctor and slowly i told suppose sometimes it is not happening this okay but you are working your husband is also working you can adopt one or two children and can grow that's all give the mother's love affection why you are creating problem for yourself and for for the family also but she didn't listen and she was crying 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 ultimately lost the brain what happened now i don't know what she is doing but only i knew that his husband is to feed her and keep a lady with her and from outside to close the door and go to the office and after coming returning back then opening again the whole life is lost not only she ruined her own life also ruined the life of the husband and he was such a nice person all through he was with her only this way see when we read the scripture for what we read only to know the stories no this teaching we should apply in our whole life this i tried it has happened okay i forget that strength should be there in the mind i tried my best in my maximum way the the god himself he tried to console yudhishthira yudhishthira didn't listen he was going on lamenting oh i am not going to be liberated from hell the yudhishthira he is lamenting even after thousands and thousands of years because i have slain friends relatives brothers teachers and indirectly slain women and children so that was the the lamentation of the yudhishthira he was emotionally he was thinking in that mood yudhishthira praised even duryodhana and really wonder that he was telling oh 
ही वॉज ए गुड बेनिफुलेंट किंग दुर्योधन युधिष्ठिर इज टेलिंग सो वेन ए पर्सन इज टेल्यूडेड ही फॉर गिट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट ही इज टेलिंग एंड वाई ही इज टेलिंग ओ ही वॉज ए गुड बेनिफुलेंट किंग दुर्योधन he used to take care of his subjects i him just for my greed for the kingdom so he was praising even the duryodhana and then he said i am not going to listen to you o krishna o vyasha you cannot console me i am not going to listen to the scripture also the scripture also cannot console me it just things but that is not for me i am a sinner man like you this thing and he was going on telling i am a sinner i am a sinner i am a sinner not solace in the words of vyasha and krishna and even in the words of the scripture he decided to visit the great bhishma so now he is going to the bhishma the bhishma we know he was lying over there in the kurukshetra and waiting for his death and they say ichha mrityu he could wish his death when any any time so bhishma was waiting why he is waiting they say because he said that when the sun will come to this and the stars will be like this then only i will leave my body actually krishna was a bhishma was having another thought what is that his god should appear before him before death so we will come to that here he is telling even the hero of the heroes the bhishma was waiting for his death lying on a bed of arrows so that is a wonderful story bhishma and then suta ubacha here the ninth chapter is beginning the skanda skanda means the book is continuing first skanda the chapter 9 first verse iti bhita praja droha sarva dharma vivatsaya tato vinashanam pragat yatra devavrato apatat devavrata was the other name of the bhishma actual name was devabrata but he took an oath so the gods they said you are bhishma as a person who can take this type of oath bhishana bhishma so this bhishma he was waiting yudhishthira is afraid bhita why fear of hell the praja drohat due to mass killing the judiciary was thinking i am going to go to hell iti bhita praja droha sarva dharma bibit saya what is this bibit saya is a knower of all dharmas it never said only dharma it says sarva dharma why sarva dharma and different situation people are in different responsibilities so all those things all this responsibilities to perform those responsibilities are also called dharma dharma is profound this word only two letter word but the meaning is profound as a mother my responsibility is to look after this and then the same lady going to the office and she is the boss over there her duties are different dharma is different and that time she couldn't spin talking with the child or talking with the family members no she has to pay attention to the job and then at the same time she is a wife she is a sister she is a daughter and so many varieties of responsibilities all a dharma so this dharma and everything was known by bhishma so sarva dharma bibit saya he knew all and this he is going to the devabrata who knew all dharma so yudhishthira thought i will go and ask him have i done the right thing 
Yudhishthira decided to visit Bhishma in Kurukshetra. His other brothers also followed him. Then the Brahmanas also, Vyasa and many others including Krishna. Krishna and Arjuna in the same chariot, they also went to Vadya. And Krishna was inspiring all, let us go, let us go. Why? That we will understand that. The Krishna organized, let us go, all of us, what conversation we will have. He is a great person, what he says, let us go and listen to that. On seeing the great assemblage, the pious Vishma who was well versed in the knowledge of duties and manners, paid them the due honors. So here, the culture. The sometime someone is coming, the moment, suppose a respected person is coming, the people will only give all attention to him or her without understanding the other people are also coming. They don't pay any attention to them. Wrong. So this is the reason the owner or the host should be there and say, please come. Then somebody else will be there to lead and the host will also receive others. Showing the affection, showing the love, showing the sympathy according to the relations. So that is called the Bhishma who was a master of duties and manners. Even on the deathbed, and the bed was the bed of arrows. He was lying over there when this assemblage came, and the assemblage of a great rishis, brahmanas, they all came. Lying over there, Bhishma was paying the respect. Seeing Krishna, Bhishma became exceedingly happy. He was aware of Krishna's divine nature. Seeing him in human form, sitting with the Pandavas to listen a discourse about Dharma, Bhishma began to shed tears. The God, he has come to me, my discourse on Dharma? So naturally, the Bhishma, he was, other could not understand. When the Bhishma was crying in the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, that uh, it has been mentioned. Arjuna was thinking that he is afraid to die. You know, the Kshatriya is always ready to die. And Arjuna was telling, why this great Kshatriya? He is crying, afraid to die? Then Krishna whispered back, I don't know, why don't you go and ask him? Arjuna went to ask the Vishma and he said, Pitamaha, why you are crying? Are you afraid to die? Then he was telling the, uh, the Vishma, Dharmakya Vishma, the knower of the Dharma. Here the Dharma means the righteousness. Here the Dharma means spirituality. Seeing his Ishta Devata, this is the first time the Ishta Devata, the chosen deity, he was Vishnu. And seeing that Vishnu in the form of Krishna, Vishnu knew beforehand everything about Krishna. But when he was as Vishma, he didn't express that. He was waiting for the time. So this, look at this. So he is a person who took the oath to protect that particular clan or particular family. He never deviated from there. So that is why Bhishma, he took that promise, I am going to protect. And he saw all those things that the Duryodhana was planning and doing. He was not supporting them, but only waiting, 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 because he knew what is going to happen. And we get this information when we are studying the Mahabharata in the Hindu temple Lemont. We came across this. Our Draupadi, when she was looking at Bhishma and telling, Why you are sitting quietly? They are torturing me. Won't you say anything? Bhishma told 
my good lady, wait and pray. Because Bhishma knew what is going to happen afterwards. All this yuddha, all this thing that will happen, everything he knew. He was the Ashtabhushu. But look how calmly he was behaving. Why? Because this is the game of God. I should not disturb it. This is the game of God. I should not disturb it. In between I am coming. This is also to learn. You know, sometimes some people who are the private secretaries of their bosses or maybe the chief prime ministers and the presidents, they know so many things. They know what is going to happen. Should not disclose. And maybe sometimes the drivers, sometimes the wife and children, they come to know about it. Should not disclose. Why? The game is going to happen. This way it will go. I, and about the God, whatever will happen, will happen. So the Bhishma, knowing everything, he was quietly, and he was also participating in the game. Sometimes we think, why this? Why so many people should be killed? Why Bhishma could not stop that? Why the Krishna had to be in that? You know, the things happen for many, many reasons. We do not know. And many things happen because of the karma phala. Many things happen because that was destined. We see only those many things. Otherwise we do not know. An ant, a group of ant was going. And the rishi came. And he was walking on that line. Others said, why you are killing the ants? Rishi told, no, I have been asked to do this. I am doing it. The people were criticizing the Rishi. Rishi did that and he went away. Those ants getting the touch of the pure soul that Rishi from the life of ant became human being in the next birth. The, they were good souls in one time and then because of some bad karma they became the ants and they were going on praying to God, give us mukti. Through the stories, they always say like this. So the God asked that Rishi, go and do this. Rishi was doing. Society was blaming the Rishi, but the Rishi knew why he is doing. Other people were not knowing. So this is the way things goes. And Sri Krishna came over there, Dharma Bhishma. Seeing his Ishta Devata, the chosen deity, resides in the heart, standing before him in the form of Sri Krishna, and mentally he worshipped Sri Krishna, saying, Krishna sa tad prabhavancha asinam jagadishwaram ridastam pujayamasa maya yopatta vikraham. He is worshipping the Krishna mentally. Is my God standing over here? And Srimad Bhagavatam expounders, now they are giving the opinion why King Yudhishthira was deluded? Why King Yudhishthira was not listened to Krishna or Vyasa or getting solace, consoled by the scripture? Because Krishna wanted it. They are explaining, the expounder they are telling, it is because of Krishna. Krishna wanted that he should go to Bhishma. Bhishma should say what will happen. Two things. The Bhishma will be great among the other people. So he wanted to, because many people were criticizing Bhishma. The Bhishma was constantly siding the bad group. The Duryodhanas and others, the Kurus. So he was criticized by many. Even the history of depicting Bhishma as that, Krishna knew that he is not. So he wanted to replace the Bhishma once again in that wonderful form. The Bhishma is great. So instead of convincing uh, uh, the Yudhishthira, he asked him to go to Bhishma. And here, this time, the Vishma, 
he was still not understanding the true nature of Krishna. Yudhishthira denied his advices, rather wanted to have guidance from the Bhishma. Sri Krishna's purpose, he wanted to that it should happen. Why? One, the pious Bhishma was constantly praying to have his darshana. The, he was going on praying, I will die when you come before me in person, otherwise I won't die. So the God was in, so when a devotee is praying, you know God is bound by that. So Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna telling again and again. The God is completely free. But at the same time, God is bound with the prayer of the devotees. And this has happened many times in the Jagannatha. And so many things happened, so many, it, we all call it stories, but no, many times that one of our Swamiji, he was telling, he's junior than me, he was telling, I have seen this. The one person, he was sick, he wanted to come and touch the rope of the chariot, you know, the Jagannath, the chariot, if you are pulling that, that means you are blessed. And that is also symbolic, please remember it. Pulling the rope means helping the God's work. When the God is going, He is going out from the temple, He is going among the people. Go and help the people, serve the people. That is the idea. Now we all go and touch the rope and then fight with others. That's wrong. We should understand what is the symbol. So that way, but that person was telling, you know, that emotion, I should go and I should touch and I should. But he felt sick. So many people, they were pulling, but the chariot never moved an inch. Then the priest went and started praying inside the sanctum sanctorium, the inside the Garbha Mandira. And then the God said, my devotee is lying there. Go bring him. Unless he touches my robe, I am not going to go. It happened. And this Swami said before me, so this thing happened, the Bhishma was praying to God, his God, who is Vishnu, come before me, then only I will die. And the Vishnu came in the form of Krishna. As so many effects happened, first, people started praising again, respecting again the Bhishma, knowing that he is a very pious man, because God has come and revealed himself before the Bhishma. All the other times the people were criticizing, gone. So Krishna wanted to replace Bhishma in that respectable position. And this is called the Bhishma. And Bhishma also prayed that I should die before the death I want to see my Ishta Devata. That happened. And in the person of Krishna he saw Chatur Bhuja, the Vishnu. So Bhishma is crying and praying. And the second, to make the world know about the truth of divine avatara. Remember, it is a progress in spiritual life. Rama never claimed that I am an avatara. Rama also did so many things, but never ever claimed that I am an avatara. In the whole Ramayana, if you read, some other people are talking about the philosophy and all, conversation between Rama and his guru, there is all Vashishta, is there. But not like Krishna, Rama has given special instruction, never. He only said to his brothers, be good brothers. To sons, be good sons, or these, or that. Good people, because the society was not ready that time to accept the God can come in the human form. Human society was not ready. So Rama never tried that. Only he was giving the idea that society should be proper. And second Krishna came, society was ready. So he was trying to give the idea that supreme God who is all pervading, but he is also all powerful. So that all-powerful God can surely take any form if he wishes. Why not? 
and he is coming as an avatar and who was there in that gathering not only pandavas and he the sutra is giving a list narada then dhomya dhomya is a great rishi bharadwaj about the name of bharadwaj many people that gotra is bharadwaj so then parashurama with his disciples vashishta and gotama rishi atri the famous rishi kashya angirasa a great suka the son of vyasa vyasa himself krishna was also there pandavas were also there hundreds of brahmanas and hundreds of rishis there there you can understand the huge gathering were all now what the vishnu will say that will reach to the whole world through this educated people sri ramakrishna he met keshav chandra sen not all the people there are so many others were also there but he went only to keshav chandra sen and keshav chandra sen got impressed by sri ramakrishna he was almost converted he was a brahmana not accepting the hindus the image worship but then he understood no it is true by coming in touch with sri ramakrishna this keshav started writing about sri ram krishna and all the educated people in those society they started visiting sri ram krishna very quickly the ideology of sri ram krishna spread it all over the society if you go to 1000 illiterate poor people your ideology on reach the society but if you go to educated people then it will immediately reach bhagwan buddha swami vivekananda said he should have spoken the whole thing in sanskrit because sanskrit was the language of the literal people he spoke in pali the pali for the ordinary people so it took so long almost 500 years after buddha to spread that that too when the ashoka came etc but sri ram krishna's ideology immediately spread it this is only 100 years 1886 he passed away and see within almost 100 years and 100 little few years all over the world so that is the way here krishna he took the whole gathering of the great personalities and there he provoked the arjuna to go and ask and yudhishthira to ask the question and who is telling bhishma the sri krishna the incarnation of vishnu the supreme god wanted that these great minds should understand and accept and also propagate the conception of divine avatar the conception of god is clear in his avatar if we see an avatar you see god why sri ramakrishna said why because his life if see the look at the life is love is affection so the one boy is to come to sri ramakrishna and sri ramakrishna had a great love for one householder devotee he was a rich man this young boy he was also rich but he thought because this person is a zamindar a lot of money is there so sri ram krishna's attention is more to him than me you know that always devotees they think in that way and they feel jealous but he was a good boy sri ram krishna is to like him but when this person is coming why sri ram krishna is to say because he was egoistic person he is a rich man who well established in the society so whenever he is coming sri ram krishna is asking kam kam when this young boy is coming he looked at him and they say okay they he will come and say so this boy became very angry and he stopped visiting sri ram krishna the so one day sri ram krishna told why he is not coming then someone told because he said when we like so and so i will come that means reach another then only i will come 
One day he was bathing in the Ganga and he saw a boat is coming. And on the boat Sri Ramakrishna was standing. And when Sri Ramakrishna looked at him and saw, I have come only to meet you. Then it was impossible for him to control. He went and fell at the feet of Sri Ramakrishna. This is God. The way they always behave. And Sri Krishna, he is doing this. And you have to understand Abhutara so that you understand God. Jesus said, He who has seen the Son has seen the Father. Same thing, the Abhutara. Aho kashtam, aho anaryam, yad yuyam dharmanandanaha, jivita na ahartha, klishtam vipra dharma achyuta asrayaha. And in the twelfth verse, the Bhishma is telling, addressing Yudhishthira. What a tragedy. Aho kashtam, aho anaryam, and it is Travesty also, it is not right also, it is not injustice. That you who have always had holy men, dharma nandana, you always in the path of the dharma, the law of righteousness, vipra dharma you followed, and the supreme being himself, achyuta astrayaha, you were there, but you got him as your guide, but still you suffered so much. Pandavas, they were suffering all through their life. So Bhishma told, I cannot understand why you were suffering. Why? Then he himself said, I could not understand Krishna. All is divine play. Though the, he is the supreme God, he is with you, you are righteous people. Even then he was waiting that you should understand him. Unfortunate thing is this, living with him in his company for such a long time, you could not understand him. And you thought that he is an ordinary person. You have come all the way to listen from me. I worship him. So that way, indirectly, he was rebuking, scolding Yudhishthira. Then Bhishma consoled them, saying, O king, it's not your fault. None can know the will of that Supreme Being. No one can understand how things will happen. Swami Vivekananda went to Kashmir. And you know the personality and the uh, popul very popular people started visiting him. In the next, uh, the very near, there was another sannyasi who was there, Fakir. He was there. He was having some 10, 12 devotees. These devotees also started visiting Vivekananda. Fakir became angry. Then he one day came to Vivekananda and told, I am giving you the curse when all people were sitting over there, to show that he is more powerful than Vivekananda, he said, Hey Swami, I am giving you the curse. From tomorrow you will have that so much pain in your belly that you have to go back from here. You cannot stay. And truly, Vivekananda smiled, but the next day onwards, truly he was feeling tremendous pain, stomach pain. He could not stay. He came home. And then he reached Calcutta, went to Ma Sarudamani Devi and complained, Is this your Sri Ramakrishna? He could not protect me only from a little. <laughs> that that uh, Fakir gave me that. And before everyone, I have to come down. Then the mother told Fakir all through his life, practice spirituality. He has also gained some power in spirituality. Why you disturbed him sitting by his side? You could go somewhere else. He was so popular, so naturally people will be attracted to you. And the little group the Fokir was having, why you disturbed them? You should not have done that. So this way he, she consoled and then she said, Naren, your pain is Thakur's pain. Do you think you are suffering? No, it is Thakur's suffering. So that is the way we should understand. Even the personality like Vivekananda, 
had to suffer. And why? Because Sri Ramakrishna will. Sri Ramakrishna wished. Though it is very, very difficult to understand the God's will. Today you are not accepted by people. Next day again you are accepted by people. Do you think because of your personality? No. God will that. That's all. So I can tell you, see the I was searching for little money for the donation because we were suffering so much in Andaman. No, nothing was there. I went to so many ministers, though the then ministers. You know, in India you have to go to the ministers, all department in their head. And everybody told, oh Swami, oh, don't worry, we will give. And I could understand that simply they are telling like that. They won't help. Only one person whom all said, no, nah, he is miserly, he will never help. And that was the only person left in the whole ministry, Pranam Mukherjee. I told, I have tried my hand with everyone, let me go to him also, what, why not? I went and I saw the Swami Vivekananda's photo everywhere in his room, office room. And Vivekananda quotations also were there under his table glass. And then we, I felt, oh, he loves Vivekananda, maybe that he will listen to me. And truly, this man who has been accepted by all others is a miser, he will never help. But I found, no, he follows the rule. He said, I am a minister. I have this much capacity. I cannot go beyond this. Other people, they are clean by breaking the law just to give a favor to somebody else. He is deceiving some, someone else. Then this man was righteous. He said, no, I will never do it. So he was not very popular. But at the same time, he was righteous. And I went, I made, and then he also was very happy. I made hardly 10, 15 minutes. I got one crore in, the, in the, those days. I could build the asthma, etc., etc. We became very close. The Pranam Mukherjee became afterwards president. I met, before coming over here, I met him there. So the, all these things happened. Do you think for me? No. It's only for God. God wanted. You should suffer. You should see how people suffer. Have love for those who are suffering. Compassion for those who are suffering. So unless and until because from right from the birth, I never knew what is suffering. What is hunger, I never knew. In Andaman only, I felt it. So the great compassion came, the God helped. So he is telling, O King, none can know the will of the Supreme Being. Even the far-sighted rishis who have tried their best to fathom the Divine Mind could not do that. Then afterwards he is telling, Esha Bhai Bhagavan Sakshat Adya Narayana Puman Mohayan Mayaya Lokan Gurhas Charati Vrishnishu. He is pointing to the Krishna. Now the great Bhishma declared openly before such a wonderful gathering. He said, Esha Bhai Bhagavan, this is that God whom you say he is the Narayana and he is the origin of all. Adya, Adya means the origin of all. This is the Narayana. But Mohoyan Mayaya Lokam from with his own power of Maya, he is deluding the whole society and living as a Brishni, living as that Yadava, that he is the person, one of the members of the Jadava clan. No, he is the original. And Bhishma is crying and he is telling, Sarvatmana samadrisha hi adhyasya ahankrite tatkritam matibhaishyamyam niravadhyasya nakachit. He is the God, the soul of all. Sarvatmana, Atma, Sarva. Sarva Atmana, he is the soul of all. Samadrisha, same sighted. So we should understand this. If we are religious people, we should not discriminate. Oh, he doesn't belong to us, he is that, he is that. 
because of food, because of the culture, because of something, we are making, no, he should not come, we cannot go to them, we should not touch them, wrong. Because our God is Samadrisha. And all gods, Samadrisha. That means religions people should not have these divisions. Other people, politicians, surely they will have. In the society and many other things happen. At least religious people should not have and without difference, adhyasya, anaham krite, without ego. Now what is God? These qualities. What is God? Realization? Developing these qualities in one oneself. That's all. God doesn't mean that He will come and the light will come and there will be four hands, His blessing and it's all movie only. At the back there will be conch shell is blowing and then flower is coming down, flower petals. It looks good, but I don't know if the God, you want to see God in that way, God may come in that way. Because, but what is actually God? Sarvatmana. I am residing every being. How can I hurt others? So that is the first. Samadrisha, same sighted. Then Adhyasya, without difference. He is rich, he is poor, he is ignorant, he is educated, no difference. And Anaham Krite, without any ego. Tatkritam, all the work that he does. And he never make any difference in that. Vishma crying in joy. O oh king, did you notice just to fulfill my prayer? My Lord has come to me in person as Krishna. Then the Krishna was praying to, the, the Bhishma was praying to Krishna, please be there till I die. And what Krishna said to Yudhishthira? Time is very short. He is going to give up the body. You better go and learn Raja Dharma. No one can teach that except Bhishma. So in the next chapter we will find the Raja Dharma that was taught by Bhishma. It is Raja Dharma doesn't mean that it should be only for the kings, it is all leaders. Thank you very much. In the next class we will try to learn that. Let us chant and then conclude. Yam Brahma, Borunendra, Rudra Maruta, Stunanti, Dipya is Tabai, Bedi Sanga, Padakrama Upanishadai. Gayanti, Gayanti Yam Samaga Dhyana Vastita Tadgati Namanasa Pashyanti Yam Yogina Yasyam tam nabidu Yasya antam nabidu The end of whom is not known Yasyam tam nabidu Sura sura kana Devaya Tasmai Om Shanti 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 Hari Please, uh, you know that in the next week our first retreat will start 
at Ganges. If you are interested, please register.